like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus. No, 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 no. nobody like Jesus. No, 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 nobody like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mukama favors we. Uh, this is a good evening again. Uh, yesterday, our president sent us on another 14 days of lockdown. So we are sitting at home another 14 days. But in all things, we are more than conquerors. And remember my opening uh, preaching when this lockdown came up. I said from... Uh, and from Romans chapter 8 verse uh, I think verse 28 yes it says there's an advantage for the believer in everything so we are not going to despair we are not going to faint. We are not going to give up. We are not going to lose our joy or our faith. Because in all things, God works all things together for good to those that love Him. And we who love Him, we will rejoice through all this and we will come out on the top. And so I want to encourage you wherever you are, do not allow the extent lockdown to pull you down or whatever you're listening to whatever your situation is in your country don't fight with the authorities or the government don't fight them because none of those people enjoy what they are saying to you. They may misinterpret things. They may not be that knowledgeable. They may not do it to your liking. But take advantage of every circumstance in God. And God will take you through it. So I believe with all my heart that this is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in, in it wherever you are tuned in. Uh, both on on, on this uh, broad uh, on this uh, live streaming and also on Impact FM. Just stay focused on the Lord. And so I invite you to listen to me this evening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I give you praise and I glorify your name because of your faithfulness. There is nothing impossible unto you. All things are possible with you, Lord. And so I pray at this time even as I begin to speak your word that you would bless everyone that is listening and everyone to whom this is going to be relayed, oh God, because you're God of miracles and your anointing is contagious. And so, whoever is listening and whoever it is going to be relayed to, even in part, Lord God, there will be a release of the anointing to heal, to deliver, to set free, to do miracles in people's lives all over this world, whether they are in China or they be in Canada. Lord God, you are almighty, whether they are in Uganda or Burundi or Rwanda or Tanzania or South Africa, wherever they may be in the UK, Lord, you are sovereign and there's nothing impossible and you're not limited by distance or time because you fill the whole earth. You're the same God everywhere. And so when we ask you here, it is good as it is in Jamaica. And so we trust you, Lord God, that you're answering our prayers. Lord, use me as your vessel this evening to minister your grace to so your people. I trust you that this very night miracles will happen signs and wonders will take place and your people will be lifted up and will rejoice in you I trust you oh God in Jesus name Amen so wherever you are seated with your family and you are listening in I know you have now come back home from the you, are, you have respected the lockdown in Uganda and you are back home so listen to me 
Uh, I am beginning to introduce a new series for this Wednesday services. Uh, on Sundays, I've introduced a, a series called Repentance, Conversion, and Confession. You have never had repentance presented in this way I presented it. A lot of people look at repentance as a negative thing. We are busting that and tell people that repentance is something that we look forward to. If we understood what it is. And so on Sundays, catch me on that. But this, on this one is the services. God has given me another series. And this series is called Divine Authority. And in a small brackets the believer's authority I'll talk about the anointing because where the authority is there also God commands the anointing remember the Bible says where two or three agree there the Lord commands a blessing and remember in, in, in Matthew 18 he said where any two of three of you agree concerning what they ask it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven so you see two scriptures that agree where people agree they gain authority and because they have authority because that comes from a consensus, they receive divine authority and they also receive the blessing which is the anointing. So, but I will talk about the anointing later on in the series. Today, I just want to introduce this thing called divine authority. And if you are listening to me and you are sick and you are troubled and you are going through things, you do not need magic, you need authority. Praise the Lord. And so I want to read from Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. Pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed and dreadfully, com dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man, I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I said to this one, go, and he goes, and I said to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Omwami ochitongo le nadamu na mugama, anti mukama wange, sisa ni dagu okuingi da wansu waka sori yaka ange. Neyo gera chigambo bugambo mulenzi wanga naona kubange na kubanga nange ni muntu mutwalibwa nga nina abasirikale bentwala bwe ngambo oyo nti genda agenda no mulala nti jangu ajja no muddu wange nti kola oti bwakola when jesus heard had it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I said to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I said to you, this is verse 11, and I said to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in the, in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out, cast out into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Banji bali va ebu vanjuba nebu guanjuba abali tula awamu ne iblaimu ne isa kana yakobo mubwa kabako bo muguru ne yaba na bubwa kabaka bali gore bali goberwa muziki za echebuero eriba okuba eriba okukaba 
no kuruma obujiji now i want you to listen to me njagala kaka no politics a man comes to jesus msajja jeri yesu seeking healing ngano nyo konyezewa but then at the end of it jesus is talking some very serious statements eku ngomeruli yabyo na yesu ayogere bigambo ebyamanyi about the people of Israel and saying how some of them are going to be thrown out of out into the outer darkness and he marvels at the greatness of the faith of this centurion a Roman who's not even a Jew and and and, and you are like why is this such a big deal because the subject matter here is of great importance it was the core of Jesus' ability to minister in Israel. It's the core of the ability of anybody to receive from God. And as much as our people are suffering, the question of divine authority is the key to their deliverance. The question of divine authority is the key to your healing. The question of divine authority is the key to your progress, to your increase, to your prosperity, to your well-being, if it is done by God. And I need you to listen this evening as we start on this series, Divine Authority. Jesus, the contention against Jesus is we're not the, the, the contention was not because of the power, the dynamis, the miracle working power. Because they did not refute it. There are so many instances where the Jews said, you know what, we cannot deny the miracle has happened. Their contention was with the authority that Jesus claimed to have. And so the biggest contention is who has authority most of the wars that are taking place in the world election confusion and fights it's about who is going to wield authority it's not about the energy it's not about the strength the gololas of Uganda do not threaten anybody. No one is worried about them. We are worried about who has authority. And so the question is not just authority on earth. We fight over authority on earth. But the question is divine authority. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Authority that supersedes the authority of a government, the authority of a president, the authority of the LC, the governor, and whatever. Now, a lot of people call themselves authorities because they are learned, because they have studied, because they have done research, and so they should be the one that speaks. And so when we talk about divine authority, it undermines their claim of authority. And that's why a lot of educated and a lot of scientists have a problem with religion. Because it takes away it dents their authority or their assumed authority because if somebody has a higher authority than you then there's a point where you gotta keep quiet you gotta shut your mouth in the military in the forces when you think you have authority a captain you're a captain. a captain. When a major comes, major oh, you got to fold your hands e and you got to salute for him because salute. somebody with a high authority has come. Now, when people have been, been saluting for the major, then the, 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 the general comes in, the then the major becomes somebody smaller. And so it goes in ranks and ranks and ranks. Now, this century is a soldier so he understands of 
authority. And so he comes to Jesus. Now, unfortunately, I mean, interestingly, a lot of people were coming to Jesus because they thought he had some magical powers. But the centurion comes to Jesus because Jesus, he believes that Jesus has authority. I remember one time I was in, in Bali here and I just gone someplace in Bugueri to preach the gospel. I keep using this, this statement so many times because it is really fascinates me. I, I, I was doing a little overnight prayer meeting with some people and it came to a time when people needed healing and so we were praying for people and, and, and all, I was laying hands on people and God was doing miracles in their lives and, and, and miracles were really happening in that little, little house where we were. I don't even remember it was. I remember it's a place called Kavule. Now I, I, I hope maybe I can still locate Kavule along Palisa Road. But I was in that room and I was preaching. I was a little younger than I am today. I was, that is almost 20, 20, 26 years ago. And, 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 and I was in a room preaching and there a few people were there and God was really moving in that little room. I remember there was a man who had an, an abdomen that was so swollen so so swollen that he was so tight so long the preaching he told he stopped me he says Mwana, um, so I don't know what he said he said stop preaching I said, why should I stop preaching? He said that that been beating. My stomach is swollen, and it's just keeping to get getting tight and tight and tight and tight. And, and, and I was about to pray for him. Then I saw like a screen on his face, and I saw Arabic writing uh, passing across his face like a maki. And, 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 and so I laid my hand and touched his tummy. And I rebuked the Islamic spirit, Islamic witchcraft that was on him. And as soon as I did that, then there was a noise in his stomach, and it began to, to, to make noise. To, 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 and then it, it just went back and went back, and the man was healed immediately. And so there was a, a Mormon, a seventh day, and not a Mormon, but a seventh day Adventist man in that very room. I don't know why he had come, but they like to argue a lot because they don't believe somebody has. This kind of authority. So he began to want to look in my palm. And in his imagination, there must have been a gadget I was using to do the miraculous. And so when I saw he was struggling to look in my palm, I turned my palm over to him so he could see there was nothing on it. There was nothing smeared on it. There was no oily thing. There was no little glittering thing or little metal gadget on it. So he would know I don't have anything that would make somebody healed or would make a stomach that is swollen go backwards. It was simply authority to speak into a situation and the situation changes. What you need today, what you need, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, the situation you are going through, the problems you are facing, you need somebody with authority to speak into your life. Now, interesting Interestingly, it might be that it's you are the one who has authority to speak into your own situation. Or it may be that someone else has to speak into your situation. But you see, I will be talking about the authority of the believers, the believer's authority, so that you know that even you as a believer, you have been given divine authority by your association with Jesus Christ. But let's first talk about Jesus. So, the Bible says Jesus entered Capena, one of the towns. And somebody who was not a Jew comes to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. This guy was not only, only paralyzed and he could not move, but he was tortured. 
He probably was making incoherent sounds. Maybe he was yelling. Maybe he was speaking obscenity. He, he was tormented by the devil. He was in distress. Until the boss, the centurion, the officer decided, I better go to someone who has authority to change this situation. He was a soldier. And he knew that although he was a soldier, his authority in the army, in the military, could not command the demon that was oppressing this man to leave. He knew that the authority he had could not command the, the paraly paralysis to, to go. My friend, you might have authority, but your authority has a sphere in which it operates. Now, a lot of people get offended when they realize their authority does not extend to certain things. You're a historian, you are no authority in research. But that does not mean your authority extends into spiritual matters. You are no authority in, in science. It does not mean your authority extends to things that science does not address. There are so many things that science cannot address. So, listen to me. Your situation, it may need the government authority. Maybe you need a piece of land. And you may need the, the mayor to say, okay. But you might have a situation that the mayor cannot solve. That even the president cannot solve. Last time I was preaching and I was talking about uh, the, 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 the lepers uh, I, 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 outside of Samaria. That there was famine in Samaria. And, uh, and, and there was so much famine that people were eating donkey heads and a dove poop and then two, two women because of that vast of the, the family agreed that they would cook boil their children and eat them and so they boil one kid and ate and then the next day they were about to boil the second one then the mother of the first kid the second kid said no 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 you want to boil my son so the woman comes to the king for redress and so she shouts oh king help me and the king said if the Lord does not help me, how can I help you? We got to be humble enough sometimes when we are in certain authority to realize that there are things we cannot do. Most of the, even theologians, they don't want to agree that there are certain questions they cannot answer, that there are certain things that are not yet explained to them. I thank God that I have the, the, the humility to say there are things I don't know. There are things I cannot have. But now this man, the, the centurion, realizes that he does not have authority to help his servant. And so he comes to somebody he believes has authority. And his name is called Jesus. When things go bad in your life, there's a place, there's a person who has authority. His name carries authority. And his name is called Jesus. And so at this time, I invite you to come to Christ because he has authority to change things situation that other authorities cannot change. So he comes to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, okay, I'll come and heal him. Now that would have seemed like Jesus has certain powers or something is going to lay on him or smear on him so that he can be well. But this man's faith is not in some medicine. Because I believe he had tried medicine, he had tried doctors, he had tried everyone to come and help their kid, this woman, the, 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 his servant. He needs somebody with a higher authority. So when Jesus said, I'll come and heal him, he said, no, I don't need another person in my house. I'm not worthy that you should come to my house. He said that one, because maybe he has had so many people come to his house, but also the other reason, he says, because he does not believe that Jesus should come down to come into his house. Praise the Lord. So he says to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. And my servant will be healed. People with authority don't have to have a lot of physique. No. 
Aha. People with authority, all they need is to have a mouth that speaks. All they need is to speak a word. And when they speak a word, things happen. This man gave Jesus a lesson and says, I'm a man under authority. I speak to this one, go and he goes, and I say to this one, come and he comes, and I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. So in other words, he was saying, Jesus, you are seated in all on, on authority. You don't need to walk to my house. I trust that you can speak. Some people like the, the, the phenomenon. They like the event. Most people, sometimes when I'm on radio, there are people who want to call you and hear you pray for them on radio instead of you just telling them you're going to be well. Because they like the, the, the event. They like the process. They like to see, oh, wow, Jesus has come to his house. Oh, he has come with his, with men. Look at the clothes they are putting on. Sometimes we are so fascinated by fashion and style and processes that we miss the whole point. This man says, I don't need any of those. I don't need your robes in my house. I don't need the, 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 the procession coming to my house. I do not need to make a business out of it, of it a story out of the fact that you have come to my house. I just need you to speak a word. I wish believers understood this. We would not be running up and down from one place to another. We would just know the authority that we have to speak into situations. And so he says, my, my master, all I need you to do, speak a word. Speak a word. Speak a word. And my servant will be healed. That is authority. Authority. The people with authority only speak. The people who don't have authority work. They have to carry things. They have to come up with thought with, with the schemes and conjure up things. Jesus is not a magician. Jesus is a man of authority. And <laughs> In Luke chapter 5, Peter said to Jesus, You know, Jesus was saying, you know, you know what, we need to catch some fish. And Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. In my assessment as Peter, there's nothing to catch. Even if we put the nets out, the fish are not going to come to the net. He didn't know that he was speaking with somebody who has authority over the fish as well. And so Jesus said, so he, but Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down my net. This is another person who believes that Jesus' word is enough. It's hard for people when you tell when the person comes and says, I am sick and say, You are healed. The person looks at you and says, like You have not jumped, jumped a little bit and waved your hand over me and done such a thing. No, 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 no. Jesus, Peter said, Since you have said, it, maybe the fish will listen to you. Maybe the ocean is going to submit to you. He believed that Jesus' word carried authority. And so he cast his net. And to his surprise, the, 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 the net was full of fish. When you allow Jesus' word into your heart, it's more than anything else. Your problem and your situation tonight requires somebody with authority. And the person who has authority above all authority, his name is called Jesus. When he rose from the grave, he did not say, I have received supernatural power. He says, I have been given authority because the supernatural power will be there but without somebody operating it it's like guns without a commander those guns 
guns will stay in the store. Somebody has to give the word for something to happen. Jesus was in a house teaching and the Bible reports and the power to heal was present in the house. And all it needed was somebody with authority to speak at to somebody and say be healed and the power would come from there wherever it was seated and heal this person. The power of God is always present. The supernatural power of God is all over this world. It's all over this world because God is omnipresent. His power is all over the world. But in different places, there requires somebody with authority to speak something and then this word, this power comes into play. So right now where you are, the power to heal you is right there. The anointing to deliver you is right there. The presence of God is with you. All that is needed is authority. But I will tell you when I continue with my series that where there's authority, there must also be obedience. And sometimes obedience of more than one person. When Mary realized there was no wine in the, in, in the party, he came to Jesus. And Jesus said, it is not yet my time. Mary wanted a miracle. But the miracle required somebody with authority and required somebody who was going to obey. So he has the person with authority. Uh -uh, Mary has the person with authority. His name is called Jesus. But he doesn't have person with with, with, with with, 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 who's going to obey. So Mary goes to the workers and says, whatever he tells you, do. Now when they were ready to do whatever he's going to tell them, then Jesus got up, opened his mouth and said, take those drums, draw water there, pour here water, pick water and go and serve it. And it was turned into the best wine in the world. All that God needs is your obedience to do what he's going to tell you. But you also need the person with authority and the person with authority is called Jesus. Now Jesus went to heaven but he left the authority down here that whoever believes in him can exercise that authority. And so tonight as I want to conclude on this the, 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 the man said to Jesus if you speak the word my servant will be healed. And then in Matthew, that very chapter, Matthew 8, verse 13, 8, verse 13, it says, Wait. Verse 13 says, Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, as you have believed, let it be done for you. Yes, Nagambo, Mamma, Chitongo, Romuruminti, Karigenda, Ngabu Kiriza. That's all that Jesus needed to say. And his servant was healed that same hour. In fact, another version of the Bible says, when the man got home and the servant had been healed, he asked what time was the person healed. And they told him the hour. And he, tell, he, he, he realized that was the very same hour that Jesus said, go your way. Praise the Lord. So tonight as I finish, the name of Jesus, now, he was here personally. But when he left, he left his name. And his name carries the same authority as he himself carried. He left us a name. The Bible says there's no name given under heaven by which men will be saved except the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, I believe. So, I want you to believe today that if we speak in his name, what what he could speak directly, if we speak in his name, it happens.
So I'm going to speak over your situation. I'm going to speak over your life. I'm going to speak over your circumstances. And even after this, you, when I teach on, after I teach on the believer's authority, you'll realize that even you yourself can speak into your situation, can speak into your circumstances, and things can begin to change. You have authority. Last night I was praying, and I was a little bit depressed. But as I prayed, I began to realize, okay, I have authority to speak over my situation and my situation can change. Let me tell you, believer, wherever you are, and now, and now we are learning even more in this lockdown. You don't have the pastors, you don't have the congregation, you don't have the, somebody who's going to anoint you with oil. You need to know your believer's authority. If, at this time, we need to know the believer's authority more than ever before. So I invite you to listen, to tune into this program every Wednesday. I'm going to teach on this until it sinks in our heart. But listen to me. This man, the centurion, got the miracle that he was requiring without Jesus going into his house. Now you don't have a pastor in your house. Now you don't have a, a, a minister coming to you. But the authority of Jesus is not the physical presence or the physical touch of anybody. It is the word. The word. The man said, speak the word and my servant will be healed. Peter said, we have not caught anything. Nevertheless, at your word, I am going to do it. And a miracle happened. Every time Jesus spoke, miracles happened. And now he has told us that every time we speak in his name, things will happen. The question is not who has the physical dunamis power. The question is who has the authority to operate that power. You have a gun, but do you have the authority to operate it? We have it in the name of Jesus. So I want us to pray right now. Wherever you are, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to believe God that a miracle can happen in your life tonight. God loves you. I love you. My wife loves you. The people that I work with love you. And that's why we are doing this. But tonight, you have somebody with authority. Or we have a name that when we use, we are in authority. And so I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. So I want to pray with you. So I want to pray with you. I don't know what Mukatonda because yes, you are going to be a little bit of a little <laughs> Faith is coming with a can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it is the can that you used to receive. How do you come to me and say, I want some water? And then you have nothing to carry the water with. You are just joking. You are just testing me. So I want you to have faith tonight that your situation can be resolved by a simple word of authority. So I want you to bow your head with me and I want us to pray. I want you to present your need now before God, your present situation, whatever is oppressing you around now. Name it right now in your words. Because you can't just say, Pastor, pray. I want you to name it where you are, say this is my problem. This is where I need a miracle. This is where I need a transformation. And I am going to pray. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. I thank you that you've given me the authority to speak on your behalf. Oh Lord God, I now release the anointing to heal. 
okuonya, to deliver, okusumulula, to set free, okurete dem, to reverse circumstances. I now pray on behalf of everyone that is listening in, in, on behalf of everyone who has staked out their faith, mukama katonda uliro kusaba, abaluade. Let them be them to be healed. Those that are oppressed, I command them to be healed. Those that are weak, I command their conditions to change. That their tears will be wiped from their faces. Joy fill their hearts. I pray, O God, that you that does not know what to do, that the sun shine and light will come to them with provision. That you will give them the provision from the east, from the west, from the west, from the west. I command provision from the east, from the west. I release a blessing on the hands, in the lives, and in the hands. The people that are praying right now. Somebody, you have placed your hand. Oh, you are like receiving something. Mukama kuteka mikono chova dosa mira. Mukama kuwa obrambu mwana wu abadalwa de. Mukama katundo murundi. Omuchala wu ya atito de mikono je. Amana we a yimiri ya mwesi gamieko kumchipega begache. Katunda wu yumana abadimuru wa de. Neye muchala we umana wu. Oh, your oh, child, your daughter, your Mwana child. Wo. A little girl, probably about two years. Very sickly. But I see on her waist is something tied. Is medicine. It's something that somebody gave you to tie around her waist. I want you to take a knife right now or a pair of scissors and cut it off and throw it in the fire right in front of you and believe God for the healing of your child. Now, I command that healing to take place. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now. I command healing. I command I command miracles. I command supernatural things to take place in people's lives. Father, that person is going to be listening on Impact FM. And I believe that God, you are healing their child. That girl is healed. Naomi is healed in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the rest of the people, whoever they are. What we say, Jumana, who is the one 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 who is the one. Even as that woman's stomach began to, the man's stomach began to to recede more than 28 years ago, I speak into that child. Even as you lay your hand on his head, that something is happening now. In the name of Jesus, release that miracle now. In Jesus' name, Father, I give you praise. I glorify your name. I speak diverse miracles, diverse signs and wonders to take place in the lives of the people that are listening to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree miracles. I decree signs and wonders. I decree a sigh of relief for those who thought, there's a woman who thought she's going to lose her husband. Your husband is coming tonight, coming back home, and there's going to be a sigh of relief in your heart. Father, you're able to do exceeding abundantly more than we can ask or think, and I trust you that it is done. Lord, may your name alone be given. May there be a restoration in people's lives, Lord God. May there be a recovery. Father, there's somebody with a problem in their neck. Lord, Nayali na kantu kalinga saplike ya siwa kula gowe. Si sapuli na ikalinga saplike. Mukama katonda uliroku saba. E chitu e chikutuke, e chiba de chimutu gambu la gowe. Chimuveko, e merembe jikembu rambu wa mchalo. Mukama katonda. Lord God, I thank you. For you know this is a man to lie. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's another person, the last one I'm going to speak over. Something is developing on your shoulder, on the back of your shoulder, on your shoulder blades. It's beginning to almost become a harm. And you find you cannot walk straight. I speak into your life that that thing recedes right now in the name of Jesus that you'll be straightened and that you'll be able to walk straight. Father, I thank you for this miracle. Swelling in the back. Kufano kukala na kufano mbili wa msajoye. 
dry in the name of Jesus. You are God at his prayer. I thank you. you Father, I thank you and I give you praise. In Jesus' name. If you have listened to me, I would like you to call our office. I'm going to ask my team as the we finish this program to give you the office telephone numbers. But I would also like them to give you the, all the number of Pastor Jackson. Jackson. Our welcome director. The one who has been praying with us in the morning. I would like you to, 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 uh, to, to that number to be on. Please call Pastor Jackson. He will pass that information to me. And we will share your testimony. If you are one of the people that have mentioned this evening or just you received a miracle after this prayer, please call us and let us know. That's your, the only thing you can do is take that step and testify. May the Lord bless you. I love you in Jesus' name. Stay safe. God bless. Cheetah, oh.